We've all heard of Pixel Mod, the mod that brings Pokemon to Minecraft, and for a long time there wasn't an alternative mod, as Pixel Mod has been the only major Pokemon mod for Minecraft since 2013, until the release of Cobble Mod. In this video, I'm going to break down why Cobble Mod is already the superior mod, which I know is a bold claim, and I will also teach you the ins and outs of how Cobble Mod works. I understand if many would disagree that Cobble Mod is the superior mod, as it currently has less features than Pixel Mod. However, Pixel Mod has had years of development. And to say Cobblemon is already better when it's only in version 1.3 with less features might suggest Pixelmon has a few problems. Speaking of problems, YouTube is telling me that 81% of you aren't subscribed. Yes, I'm doing that annoying YouTuber thing. Ah, look at Pitplub. Isn't it cute? Subscribe for Pitplub. You don't want to disappoint that adorable Pokemon, do you? When Pixelmon first started, the models were, let's just say, forgettable. But after years of development, this is what Pixelmon looks like now. Now, it's memorable because they terrify you. And these models are from Pixelmon Reforged, not to be confused with Pixelmon Generations. Unless you know everything about Pixelmon, you're probably confused. Back in 2017, Pixelmon was shut down. Nintendo forced the creators to cease and desist which is a formal letter basically telling you to stop what you're doing or we'll sue you. Pixelmon now has two versions, Reforged, which is a direct continuation of Pixelmon, and Generations. Unfortunately, neither of these mods are even available for Fabric, as they're only playable in Forge for older versions of Minecraft. This is where Cobblemon shines. Cobblemon is available in both Forge and Fabric for the latest version of Minecraft. I've also encountered less bugs in Cobblemon, and it offers more stability compared to both versions of Pixelmon. When I first loaded up a Pixelmon world, it didn't take long for me to find Pokemon spinning around in circles. Cobblemon also fits the theme of Minecraft compared to Pixelmon with their high polycount models. I'm also not a fan of Pokeballs in Pixelmon because they feel slow and janky. And when you capture a Pokemon, the ball turns completely black, which is, uh, why? Whereas Cobblemon use voxel models for their Pokemon and Pokeballs. Not only does Cobblemon have improved models, but each model has unique idle, death, and sleeping animations. For example, Zubats literally faceplant the floor. There's also custom animations and sound effects for Pokeballs. When the Pokemon is being captured, the Pokeball will do a little wobble and play a little sound when the Pokemon was successfully caught. And if unsuccessful, it makes a little poof sound. I also adore summoning Pokemon in this mod. There's a really cool laser beam with sound effects from the anime, and as someone who grew up watching Pokemon, this makes me feel like a little kid again. In Pixelmon, you toss the Pokeball, and the Pokemon just appears out of thin air. It doesn't really feel as special. Even when you load your first Cobblemon world, you will be prompted to press M. This opens up your starter Pokemon screen. Here you can choose Pokemon from different generations. Currently, generations 2 and 9 are missing. And this is also the only way to get Pokemon from later generations, because as of right now, only generation 1 Pokemon will spawn in your Minecraft world. So while Cobblemon currently lacks Pokemon compared to Pixelmon, it makes up for that in quality and how interactive it is in your Minecraft world. Cobblemon also provides clear, concise information when you choose your first Pokemon, from its type and what region it's from. In Pixelmon, you get cute 2D images, yay? Pixelmon also forces you to choose Pokemon right away, but in Cobblemon, you can tab out to think about your decision. For this example, I'll choose Pitplup. For the subscribers, of course. Once you have chosen your Pokemon, press M to access your Pokemon's data. You're also able to change your Pokemon move to whatever you like without discarding the previous one, meaning you can have different builds for your Pokemon, much like Pokemon Arceus. Also using these small arrows you can change the order of your moves. Now that you have your Pokemon set up, let's take it into battle. The first major difference with Cobblemon compared to Pixelmon is your ability to leave the battle and freely move around, allowing you to view the battle from different perspectives. You can also craft and interact with your world as usual mid-battle, and if you're trying to catch a particularly difficult Pokemon, you can keep crafting Pokeballs if you happen to run out. When you're battling Pokemon, you're given the typical options to fight, run, capture, or switch. When you choose run, you have to physically run away from the Pokemon to end the battle. And when you choose fight, all the battle information is displayed on the right hand side. Currently, there aren't any battle animations, so pay close attention to that screen and your Pokemon's health. Pokemon will also drop random items when it's defeated. These items can be evolution materials, held items for your Pokemon, or even vanilla items. Oh, and you can also kill Pokemon yourself. If you don't want to battle the Pokemon, just slap them with a sword. Once you've defeated a few Pokemon and gained some XP, your Pokemon will be ready to evolve, and the evolution process in Cobblemon is really straightforward. Cobblemon is also incredibly interactive, as certain Pokemon can also be placed onto your shoulder giving you different buffs, and you can do things like sharing Wooloos. To place Pokemon on your shoulder, shift right click your Pokemon and a menu will open up. You're given two options, one is to give your Pokemon a health item and the other is to place it on your shoulder. The way you also obtain Pokeballs, items and evolution materials in Cobblemon makes it feel a lot more inclusive. 
For example, to craft Pokeballs, you need Apricots, which you can find on trees around your world. You'll also need Iron, Copper, and Gold to craft the different types of Pokeballs. Most held items are also attainable through crafting, and they all require vanilla items to craft. Two of the very important items you'll need are your PC to access all of your Pokemon, and the Healing Station, which are also incredibly cheap to craft. The healing station is pretty straightforward, right click the healing station to heal your damaged or fainted Pokemon. I'm also a big fan of the PC, I love the sound effects, how easy it is to use and everything feels clean and polished, and the way the screen lights up is just really cool. I won't go into every little last detail about this mod, as something should be left to be discovered for yourself and I don't want to bore you. However, while digging into this mod, I did discover something that gives me hope for the future of Cobblemon. When you attempt to summon different Pokemon with commands, you can summon Pokemon from the different generations, which currently have placeholder models. However, you can interact with them as usual, and despite them not having a model, the Pokemon has the right moves, stats, and information. To me, this is a clear message that more will be coming to Cobblemon very soon, as this mod is far from complete, and the developers are hard at work bringing us possibly one of the coolest mods we will ever witness. Cobblemon is still in early development, so don't brush it off because it lacks content, it makes up for that in quality. If there's one thing I would like to see added to Cobblemon, it would be battle animations. Given what the developers have already done, I know they can do it. Oh, and I'll also be making a series. Subscribe for Piplup.